Hello! Let's see if I remember to hold start this time. First of all, thank you very much for staying with the series so far, despite all the background noises and other low quality indications for this series. I'd like to talk about towns. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I think that town sequences like this are not really looked at enough when people talk about these games, especially with reviews. It's always about the combat, but this is this is something I I want to emphasize because Shining Force 1 in particular does this very well. Because of things like that. They go out of their way to add a lot of flavor to each particular town. And in a and to a few specific interactions. Although well, most games do this, but Shining Force has a flavor that I haven't seen any other series capture. Oh, sure. Okay, fine, let's go. Game over. It was nice while it lasted. Also, that was... Absolutely the portrait of a Shining Force good guy, wouldn't you say? Well, that's odd. Just one town over, everyone was justifiably talking about how dangerous Runefaust was. It has nothing to do with us, huh? I've heard that before. Oh. I feel like that would have been funnier if I would looked at it in the other order, but whatever. We got our headquarters, of course, and there's... Oops. That's one thing I find annoying about town boundaries not really being clear. But it's a very short setback in this game, I'm happy to say. And in this, in this town, it's especially important to talk to a whole lot of people because there are event flags attached to it that require that are required for me to progress. Yeah, you have to actually move your controller to the right to progress this. Could. Could I keep them? Man, that, that was odd. But I approve of that. For, this is one of the plot critical places to visit. And not because of that character. Hmm. I'm not sure that says good things about the town. Why, yes. It's not in great shape, but there's still some of it standing and some people there, so I'm gonna say no. Oh. Well, I guess we better go clear up that misunderstanding soon. Hello? With a line like that, and a cart like this... You know what? Maybe I should just move that cart over and tell her how dangerous it was to have it in line. Oh, okay, never mind. 
Well, maybe she'll forgive us for that. Like, like this sort of thing. This is not the sort of thing that happens on a whole lot of 16-bit uh, RPGs. Although, I feel like maybe we shouldn't have been rewarded for what we did there. Wait, what? There... Yeah. Just in case the Runefaust is no big deal thing wasn't enough of a tip, there does to seem to be something strange going on. And he won't save our game for us. Th that's why I went back to the previous town. It is... I'd, I'd call it the biggest sign that something is wrong, even though this is very early in the Shining Force series. Shining in the Darkness also put a lot of work into its town. I use that singular because there was only one that you ever went to. But there was some pretty impressive uh, pixel art in that game. Like really big detailed characters for the day. I'm leaving the treasure chests alone for now because it doesn't feel right to rob the whole place. Now, I'm trying to break the habit of going through the, this text too fast, but I've been doing this at my usual pace for a long time, so it's a tough habit to break. My apologies for the numerous times I've been slipping over the last few videos. Um, maybe you shouldn't have mentioned it. I don't think it's gonna mean nothing to me, but whatever. It looks like it's your business, though. I don't disagree, necessarily. But... If you're in that gear, I'm not sure that the king would agree. Wow, you don't even know me. This is a pretty generous place. Oh, okay. Well, you got a portrait, so I know you're important. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Hard to believe, huh? Haven't they been doing this sort of thing a lot? I gotta remember all those treasure chests, because I do plan to loot later on. Oh! Fancy seeing you here. And you, and... Uh, that very approachable person to the right. Well... Nope. Well, a little bit. But one of the things that I like about this particular sequence is... I've seen the trope before where the characters decide they have to go to this town to get help, 
and it turns out that the bad guys got there just before the heroes did and have started negotiations. And it all feels a little bit contrived. But in this case, I can't really even be mad. Because we see the sequence of events where Kane says he has other things to do, he leaves, and then we have to fight a battle while Kane is out doing stuff, and this place is a supposed ally, and it's right next door, so of course he has plenty of time to walk over there, and it's the next logical place for him, and it works astonishingly well for a, a game like this. I mean, I don't expect amazing writing from Shining Force, but I think this was a fairly nice touch. Oh, there you are. Oh, sure. Don't worry, we're going to get some fighting done. I wouldn't look too closely in there. Him. Oh, uh, that that one I uh, I did not mean to skip. It said the bars are solid. There's no way to break out. And footsteps approach. And look who's here. You you're gonna be okay. Oh, he didn't notice. Not sure why we got the sad music for this one. Hmm. Well, as far as characters go, Chris is a healer like Lo, except Chris is better at it. She learns the all-important Aura spell, which is an area of effect heal, and we are going to need that. It's also good for building experience on a healer, and we've already seen some of the problems with it. But we're not quite there yet, because Chris doesn't start out knowing that spell. It's gonna be a little tricky. Alright, give me your, uh, sage advice. Well, we found out that they have mages and archers on this one, which they did not before, so I guess that's not the worst advice we've gotten. I don't think we can handle him yet. Now, technically, mentioning Dark Soul was a spoiler a video or two ago, but considering that we have this line in the early game, I don't feel too bad about it. It's tough to find anyone who might get a lot from beating them. Uh-oh. Well, that serves me right. I could have solved that problem earlier, but I didn't. Now I gotta start over. Man, that was a lot of talking I did before. Well, that's what happens when you depend on the turn order to be kind to you. <sighs> oh well. See you next time. Welcome to this map, which I completed... Uh, which I'm going to complete on my first try, of course. I didn't lose my main character here. That that would be really stupid. 
I'd have to... Well, anyone who loses their main character on a map like this should quit tactics games forever. Hmm. So, the main feature of this map is the river that splits it down the middle. And there are enemies on either side of it. So, the natural impulse is, since we have quite a few characters, to split them up and move them along each side. You don't have to do that, though. You can just move everyone along one path and kind of swing around like this. But to save time, I'm going to split up like the map kind of intends. My goals here for character leveling are to give Tao one level, which will not be difficult because she's almost level 4 already, and to get a couple of kills for Chris if I can possibly manage it. Fortunately, the bats have such low defense that even Chris's barely existent attack power is enough to hurt them a bit. So what I'm going after is not completely impossible. I will have to be careful about it, though. I'm also sending my heavier characters to the left because, aside from the bats going that way, we have those ru rune knights and they hit fairly hard. There's also quite a few of them. On this side, we've got archers, which are nothing really special. And we've got this mage, which is kind of something special. Of note is Blaze 2, which is a spell we don't have yet, and I'll talk about the implications of that when we get a bit closer, and also that shield ring, which is not equipped, and that's a huge indicator that it's going to drop that item when killed, which means it is extra important to make sure that either everyone has a free inventory space or that you check that whoever you have attacked the mage has some spare space because if an item is dropped and your inventory is full you just don't get it. It goes to the deal shop and usually costs a lot of gold. You don't get the option to drop anything yet you happen to be carrying in order to replace it. That would be too nice. I also do not fully understand enemy movement in this particular map. I'll give an example once I get a turn. These three sometimes just stay right here, but sometimes they move down to defend this bridge, or they'll split so that only one or two will go, and I'm not quite sure what triggers their particular behavior for this. Now I'd like to move a little bit slow here to move the bats the way I want to because they, they have a very large aggro range if you want to look at that way. So I'm going to have this team stay for a moment until the bats start to move. that pulls the two rune knights as well. Okay, good to know. Well, that's not great, but 
of the targets that they could put to sleep, that's not the worst. The worst would probably be Chris, because aside from being a healer, she's the one I need to level the most. And also the the dwarves would be bad because they're my heavy hitters. Well, now that the bats have moved in that direction, it's okay for the main character's team to get going. And I'm just gonna call him Max from now on, even though I named him differently. Because... Ahem. Because that is the default name if you pick no letters at all when naming the character, and also I believe later games in the series say that he was Max. Well, this, this sleep placement is actually not great because I need to get Chris around to hit those giant bats somehow. Aside from having a low base defense stat, the bats are also particularly fragile because as flying units they don't get a benefit from the land effect which is just about everywhere. Ah, uh, just... <laughs> yeah, they're like... A miss? What? No, we can't have that. Right, now that I have access to Blaze Level 2, I guess it's time to explain how area of effect magic works in this game. You do not target a tile with it, you target enemies with it. Which means that, for example, if characters are, in, are on diagonals with nothing in between, you can only target one enemy with them. It's, it's a plus sign, like they usually are in these games. Which means that when dealing with the enemy mages, it's good to move like this. Checkerboard formation, or diamond formation, or as I just call it, shining force formation. Of course, this also prevents area of effect healing spells from working, which in turn means that to take advantage of those things... Oh, that's not good. Alright, well, I guess I might as well use some healing then. Well, healers kinda snowball in this game in that 
once they gain some levels and some MP, it becomes a lot easier to level them because they can cast more times per battle. But the early healer levels are just truly wretched. It is a huge pain. Whoa, okay. Well, it's a good thing I brought two healers, huh? That is not what I wanted. Not even close. I think I'm gonna, just gonna have to have him back off. Which means Tau is going to take a hit from a knight. That's not great. I'd like to give kills to Gong and Max if I can. Although, of course, doing this with Max is risky. Wow, that's pretty bad luck. I don't think I, I've seen a character stay asleep for that long very often. They usually wake up on the first or second uh, turn. Well, if you've played Pokemon, you know how annoying random sleep is. Well, random sleep duration. had to stop to think for a second. Hmm, it is pretty tanky. That, that's one of the nice things about her in the early game. That counts for a lot. Maximum magic points for Max are not that useful. Because he only has the egress spell and he has enough MP for that right at the start. This is not the case in any other Shining Force game, including the remake for the Game Boy Advance, which give them some kind of attack magic. But that's not the case in this game. This also means that the angel wing item is not that useful here. Whoa, that was three times damage right there. He was really certain he wanted to get rid of Tau. Man, a double attack and one was a crit. And that is why I am perfectly okay with Shining Force being forgiving of character loss, because things like that can happen. Just just because they say so. And it's not like, oh well he was wielding a killer weapon, you deserve what you get. and. No. <laughs> oh ho. Uh, 
Uh, well, we have two enemies at one health. Uh, holding out is going to be a little tricky. But I think it's going to be worth it because leveling Chris is that much of a pain. Still? Really? What is going on with this? Alright, so we got one bat going this way, which is fine. Uh, that doesn't hurt me too much. Let's see, Gong can finish that one off. Well, I don't want to pull the dwarves, but I don't think they actually move, at least not until they're attacked. So I might as well get the first strike in here. In theory. Okay. Well, because of that unfortunate incident, I can't show you... Wow, what? Well, I guess better that than a Christmas. Yeah, that's fine. I wasn't gonna try and get all three of them on Chris's kill list. That that would be a little bit much for my defenses, I think. We'll have plenty of opportunities for some good blaze spells later. Don't worry about that. Well, things have been a little messy, but... At least they're more or less under control now. Man, that is... that was the bat bite of doom right there. I think that was also a demonstration of the weirdness that can happen in this game when it comes to turn order. Which is, you can get a low speed roll on one turn and then a high roll on the next, which is essentially a double move compared to whoever you're next to. There are people who take advantage of this by equipping or unequipping an item called the Speed Ring to get double turns on enemies in certain situations. Detox does not remove sleep, by the way. At least, not level 1. I think it might remove other stuff at later levels, but I'm, I'm not sure if that's in Shining Force 1, actually. Alright, just don't miss. Alright, well that's one step. I'm gonna need a few more of those, although it's... 
Actually going to be a little bit easier later on once we get another item or two. But we might as well do a good job with it while we can. Well, I mean, when, when I mean while we can. Uh, at every opportunity. Alright, how's Gong? Still level 3, but almost done. Th those guys are bad bridge guards up there. The mage and archer don't move until you walk up to them, just like the dwarfs here. And see this formation, the diagonal line? That's the sort of thing I was talking about with avoiding AoEs. Since Shining Force was my first tactics game, uh, when I played Final Fantasy Tactics, my mind got blown. Because I tried the same formation, and of course everyone got hit, and I'm like, What? What? You can do that? That's cheating! Whoa, you're, you're alive! Oh my, I'm so shocked. Alright, so who needs it? Yeah, I think Luke does. It's worth remembering that you get experience for casting heal spells even if no health is recovered. That's one of the things that makes the aura spell so great. And I haven't tested this in Shining Force 1, but I know that in Shining Force 2, if you have a class with healing spells, use a healing item, you also get experience. But that doesn't work for characters who aren't natural healers. I, I guess that has something to do with the code related to healing people. Well, of course, what else would it relate to? But... Anyway, that's a handy thing to remember. Uh, those dwarves must have been given very strict orders. Like, don't move out of place no matter what happens. That... yeah, I, I, I'd still like to move them out of the way. M move him out of the way, I mean. Okay. Getting a little confused with the buttons for a second. It's okay to have level 4 characters beat the sniper and um, mage, though. Those count as fairly high-level enemies for where we are. And Mei is hurting for experience. Because of that eternal sleep thing. Alright, I think it's just about time to move forward. Well, no, I might as well get rid of the dwarf first. And Gong is going to do that. I'll take that maximum health. And these knights, well, of course, they don't move until something hits them. So I'd like to... well, okay, I think this is fine. But we took plenty of punishment on that side, so we certainly needed both healers. Well. 
Yeah, I think this this is also okay. Might as well show off because even though Gung's health isn't the best, and it would normally be a very bad idea to move up like this because the sniper could just move back a tile and attack, you've seen the coding for them in this bridge, so in this one case I think it's safe. And if I'm wrong, well, it'll be a valuable lesson. Gong may die, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. And that kind of shows how... how sad the sniper's physical defense is. If even Gong can deal that much damage. Oh well. No wait, that would be bad. Uh, Hans would get murderized. I mean, it doesn't matter in this case, but... Oh wow, he actually targeted the person most able to handle it. Yeah, Shining Force is a little weird that way. So it looks like that was a little roll. It may also be that Blaze 2 in this game is a little bit weaker than in later games. Although, it, it also costs a bit less, so that that's also pretty reasonable, I think. Oh wow, he's not moving either? Okay, sure. So I think I'm gonna be a little bit greedy here. Alright, the mage just moved so I think I can safely, well, more or less safely attack. There is that that uh, double turn thing. The cost for losing a character, by the way, is 10 gold per level the character had, which is not a whole lot, especially at this point in the game. I realize that I'm taking a risk here if I miss. Say what? Okay, I'm fairly sure I adjusted everyone's inventory correctly. So that they had a an empty slot. Yes, they did. Okay, so I guess he doesn't drop the ring. Or maybe it's random. Actually, that seems like the most likely thing. That's too bad. I could have used a defense ring. Okay, well that certainly puts things in perspective. Yeah, I think one kill for each of them might be good. And there's still one sniper over here. What? Give the give one of those kills to Lo? No, are you joking?
Oh, uh, alright, whatever. A critical hit against an enemy with one health. That happens in these games. So how does the experience look over here? Yeah, that's, that's pretty reasonable. Ooh, may missed out on a lot here, but that's okay. Her stats aren't horrible, and I think even a normal attack will be enough to level her up next mission. I was 100% certain that that power ring would just drop automatically if you had an empty uh, inventory slot. Boy, it's a good thing I didn't kill him with uh, someone earlier than realize they had a full inventory and I had to start over. Oh, that would have been that would have been very embarrassing. Yes. It's, it's a good thing I would never make a mistake like that. Oh, I wouldn't advise wasting MP on empty heals unless there's no one who actually needs recovery. Aside from the obvious reasons, you get more experience if you recover a lot of hit points with your with your cast. Wow. Cannot even be bothered to move that one tile. I think I better give that kill to Mei. Technically, I would get more total experience if I did that with a level 4 character, though. Might not be an awful idea. Especially because I think Max kind of needs it. Well, not really. Not that badly. Fine, I'll, I'll go with my original plan. If she misses though, someone else is taking it. Ah, that's... wow. Remember how I was saying she was already tanky? I guess she just went and tripled down on it. Well, now that all that is done, let's not leave. Let's talk to people and find out what they really thought. Yeah, the, one of the things that I like about this is the characters all, are also kind of earnest about what kind of people they are and what they like. Um, even when they're trying to fool you, it, it's pretty easy to tell these things. <laughs> what I find especially funny is that their attempts to say everything's fine, Runefaust is not a threat at all, just make the whole thing seem more suspicious. Not, of course, that it helps the main characters because they have to go and fall into the trap anyway, but... I wouldn't bet on that one. 
the solution to that one seems to be gain more levels first. Well, there are a bunch of treasure chests here, but this video has already gone on for a while. We were never in real danger. I, I disagree, sir or ma'am. Yeah, they probably do. They're, they have a lot of rebuilding work to do. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't lying earlier. Those are the best weapons in town, and that's kind of sad. It's okay, though. I've been doing enough damage with what I've got. Oh, well, okay. Most of the treasure chests around here just have uh, garbage, though. Man, but... <laughs> so I guess me and the bad guys are on roughly equal footing now. Bad guy-wise. Well, there's always room in the Shining Force for more people if you're really that badass. You couldn't do anything! That was not nice at all. Well, we'll deal with the rest of the town stuff next time. I think I'm done for now. Oh, don't worry. I have plenty more videos to make. Even if my update schedule is a little shaky. We'll see you next time.